Many new writers say that it's nearly impossible to get their scripts to people that actually have the power to buy them or greenlight them. That that's their problem. That mm -hmm. they're that the access. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? And that's the reason they're not made. Sorry. Yeah. I would I would say they don't know how lucky they are <laughs> as of today. Um, it depend. You have to get used to the system you have. I've, for instance, back in back in the day, back in my day, there was one way into Hollywood, TV, film, one way, and that was through an agent's front door, and that agent's front door had layers and layers of guardians before it, and that was also frustrating, you know, in a similar way, but very very frustrating to get in. But now, what you have. Uh, you have a more creative path, let me put it this way. Contests, screenwriting contests have now been around long enough to separate the wheat from the chaff. You know, the good ones uh, uh, year after year have gotten stronger because, you know, more people believe in them and, and, and the less good ones, uh, although they're all sincere, I know they're all sincere, have uh, kind of fallen, fallen by the wayside. But the test is this, every time I hear that, I mean, yes, I, I have great sympathy for that. I understand that. I remember when I was coming up myself and what it felt like, and it was infuriating and frustrating. But the number one reason why you are not making it is the material is not yet good enough. Because you, if you're not, especially if you're not reading, you know, that reading the stuff that's out there, you have no way of knowing how good good has to be in order to get noticed. And coming in, you have to be better than most of the people who are now making a living at it in order to get noticed, even. But the contests offer, you know, the, the, when I was talking about re-objectification, re the contests offer a concrete way to do that. Work on it and work on it and work on it until you've got something you're ready to test. But now, Pick your contests carefully. The first time you try it out, pick smaller contests, you know, more, more fringy. I mean, do your research. They should be decent, upstanding contests and, and so forth. Try it out. Try it out. Did you make the quarterfinals or were you swept away you know, in, in, in the first pass through? Okay, if that happens, you have learned something. It's not ready and you keep working on it, and you keep working on it. And finally, when you, know, you get to the mid-level ranks, and let's say it gets your, your script gets to the quarterfinals, okay, but it did not make the top 10 or top 15, fine, you've learned something more. Go back, take a vacation for a couple of weeks, try not to think about it, then read it again, make more notes, and go back to work on it. And it is a way to, that's the thing, see, what, what, what a lot of neophyte screenwriters, new f screenwriters don't do or don't pursue, which is you have got to be, as a writer, as a craftsperson, you must be relentless in your goal of, of creating quality material. Um, for instance, I'll give you, for instance, and maybe that'll sort of. Um, I'm working with uh, a, a young lady right now who was one of our grad students a few years, a couple, two, three years ago. Uh, she's been my assistant, a class assistant, and stuff like that, so we know each other pretty well. She took her thesis screenplay from, I don't know, three years ago. And I read it, and I told her, You got a great idea here. You know, you really do. I believe in this idea. And we had conversations about, you know, there's no such thing as a bad screenplay, only an unfinished one and all that. And I gave her some pointers and, you know, scribbled things on the pages and she went back and she wrote it again. This is a feature film. And I looked at it and I, you know, this is better. This is a little better. And I went through, I had the, you know, the sample editing and scribble, scribble and all this kind of stuff. And then she takes it and she comes back and it's a little bit better. She has been through that process, with, well, in this case with me, uh, oh, it, it must be six times now. I mean, years have passed. 
I mean, that was, she, this, she, she had a draft of this when she went up for her thesis three years ago, right? But I'll tell you, and I'm, I'm reading it once again. I'll probably be looking at it again this weekend. She is so close, so close. What I would really like, to, I, ke I kept telling her, keep track of, don't lose your draft of your, of your first draft. Don't lose a copy of your first draft. Because a day is coming, I would like to have that in my hand and your final draft and put that together in a binder and use this in class. Have people read the first draft and now read the last draft. And that, I believe, could be a wonderful, wonderful exploration of teaching and screenwriting because this has become viable. She is now close to having a sh an entirely shootable, casting, really good social commentary screenplay. What changed in those six drafts over the three years or however many? Craft. Craft. Her mastery of, of, of I mean, what most of them do is they write what they mean. When they come to dialogue, people just blurt it out, and it's called on-the-nose dialogue. Uh, that's one of the things you teach. Stop it. <laughs> people do not talk like that. People talk around what they mean. Uh, not that there can't be confrontation and stuff like that under certain emotional circumstances, yes, but it was dialogue and Less is more in terms of the amount of dialogue. In description, it was about the use of language and vocabulary in description, using irrelevant words, the, and, there. There's a whole list of, there's the nine most utterly useless words. I, I got it back there on a sheet I pass out sometimes. Um, all that is is filler. All that does is slow the reader down. It is developing a style in the way you describe and, and offer exposition and description in, in s scene with scene heading slug lines and then what we're looking at and stuff like that. Drawing people in where you put things, the plot, building the plot in an ever better way. You can do more here, you can do more here. That's what, what's been going on for all those years. So you liked her initial idea of the story. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And it, so it, it and it was you. in mm -hmm. very rough form, very rough form. She had written badly with pride, and in neath, underneath that, there had been there's just something that really struck me. You know, this is this is worth saying, and this is important to say. It's a social commentary piece. It's not like there's a big market out there for social commentary pieces. There isn't, but. Uh, I say, okay, but it has to be done incredibly well to catch the eyes you want to catch. Is it ever going to be made? I don't know if it's ever going to be made or not. That's out of our hands, right? But I am so proud of her. Boy, she has got a, a work sample for the ages. So. And you've let her know not, not too soon because once she takes yes. this brilliant idea yes. and it's not ready that's it the end of it shoot her in the foot that is kind of that metaphor. is correct mm -hmm. time and again oh she was planning two years ago to send it off to one of the majors i don't know i don't know what's it's, it's a script of palooza or what one of the majors you know and she has to take one more look at it before she sent it off <clears throat> i said i think you're it's self-defeating to send this off yet and she, there was a small contest. It, it's the BFA, Broadcast Education Association, has a, st a student thing every year. And they have uh, uh, contests, uh, short film contests for students and scripts and so forth. I said, try it there, try it there. And she did. And uh, she learned some stuff. She learned some stuff. And she also learned that, that sometimes judges can be jerks. And that's part of the mix, too. Sure. Um, but she learned, she kept working, and it got better. That is how you write. Everybody who says, you know, you got to crank, once when I was coming up, I said, you got to crank out a brand new screenplay every six months. That's a, that is insane. I'm sorry. You can't do good work if you're doing that. No, you have to live with it. You have to grow with it. You have to be able to go back and read it again and again and yet again. 
drives my wife nuts. When I was working on the book, you know, I was already was ready to send it to the, 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 the publisher. And she said, you're sitting down to read it again? What is wrong with you? I said, honey, you, you married a madman. I mean, that, that goes with the territory. That's what writers do. And I read it again, and I found mistakes, and I fixed them. It's endless. So the, the best thing for a writer is to have been born a bit obsessive compulsive. It's like that is a trait that th the craft requires of us. You don't just dash it off. You don't. And do it well.